in this section, we will cover how to translate word problems into equations so that we can then solve the equations. I highly recommend you look at the table on page 370 of the textbook. In this table, it will give you a verbal description and then next to it, the mathematical symbols that correspond to it. And I think that's a great way to review, for instance, when it says the sum of x and 2, that would translate into the symbols x plus 2. And that will help you as you go through these word problems be able to translate the word statements into equations. So this is a useful resource. Let's turn to our first example. The average yearly salary of with a woman with a bachelor's degree exceeds, so when I think of the word exceeds, we think is more, that of a woman with an associate's degree by 14000 The average yearly salary of a woman with a master's degree exceeds, so again is more, that with a associate's degree by 26000 Combined, combined makes us think of adding everything together. The three women with each of these educational attainments would earn 139000 Find the yearly salary of the women with each of these education levels. So in the end, we need to know the average yearly salary with the bachelor's degree and associates and a master's. In that case, would we agree that we know there's three unknown things? We don't know the average yearly salary of the woman with the bachelor's degree, let's call that B. We don't know the average yearly salary of the woman of the associate's degree, let's call that A. And we don't know the average yearly salary of the woman with the master's degree, which we'll call M. So we don't know any of these directly, but we do know a lot about how they relate to each other. For instance, it says that a woman with a bachelor's degree, her average salary exceeds that of an associate's by exactly this much. Now the word exceeds is more, so the bachelor's degree is more. So at this point, you're probably thinking, I should write down this, or perhaps this. I would see these would be the two common ways people would try to translate that statement. One of them is correct. And if you're ever not sure, just write down both and then think about it. What was supposed to be higher is the bachelor's degree because it exceeded the other. Now this statement would make it look like the bachelor's degree is less because you have to add 14 to get to A. So that's false. We want to look at the first equation. So if you're not seeing the equation right off the bat, don't get... Uh, stuck there, just write down the two options that you see and think about which one would be correct. Similarly, can you translate our next statement that I'm highlighting into an equation? The master's degree, when compared to the associate's degree, the master's degree exceeds it by 26,000. Write that down. So the master's degree is equal to the associate's degree plus 26,000. So we're just working our way through the problem, translating each statement. Next comes up that combined, they earn this much. Combined makes us think of all added together, so that would give us the equation A plus B plus M equals 139. And in the end, we want to know A equals what, B equals what, M equals what? Now the key thing to remember is you can only solve an equation in a single variable. So you can't solve this equation as it's written because there's two variables. You can't solve this equation as it's written because there's two variables. And you can't solve this one because there's three. We can only solve things in a single variable. So our goal will then to be substitute values. For instance, if we could get this equation all in terms of a single variable, then we could solve. And it's set up to do that because B equals A plus 14. M equals A plus 26. So if I substitute these alternate versions of B and M into the equation, then I'd have one side all in terms of A. So we would have A plus, okay, B is A plus 14 plus m is a plus 26 equals 139. And then at this point, it's just like our previous section. We simplify each side and then solve for the variable. So a plus a plus a is 3a 
14 plus 26 is 40, and that's what's equal to 139. Now take a moment to pause the video and solve for A. Unpause to check your work. Now as we solve for A, we are going to move 40 to the other side. It's currently positive, so we'll subtract it. Cancels it from that side. Now 139 minus 40 is 99. And that's what's equal to 3A. 3 is being multiplied, so I could divide both sides by it. And that would give me that A equals 33. So A is $33,000. And once you know one of the unknowns, then pretty quickly you can find the other unknowns. Because specifically, we had a relationship. We knew that whatever A is, if you add 14, that gives you B. So 33 plus 14 would be 47. So B is $47,000. And then for the master's degree, we said whatever A is, which is 33, if you add 26, that gives you the master's, so 33 plus 26, and that would be 59,000 dollars. So the goal is to read through the problem once or twice, translate each statement into an equation, and if you don't have variables given to you, then name the different quantities that you want to know about based on uh, reasonable names, so bachelor's degree was B, associate's degree was A, master's degree was M. Write your equations and then try to manipulate them to where you get one equation in one variable. Let's look at our next example. In 1969, 85% of freshmen considered this objective essential or very important. And I realized that I forgot to write in the objective. It was developing a meaningful life philosophy. Since then, this percentage has decreased by approximately 0.9% each year. So decrease means gone down. If this trend continues, so if we continue to lose 0.9% each year, by which year will only 25% consider developing a meaningful philosophy of life? So the way we think about this is in 1969, there were 85 fresh or 85%. In 1970, we had 0 0.9 less than that, so 85 minus 0 0.9. And that gives us 84.1%. And we could continue subtracting 0 0.9, writing the year. But I think we could see that's going to take a very long amount of time before we get to 25%. So there has to be a faster way. The idea comes from the fact that we have this constant rate decrease of 0.9% each year. So we could set up an equation that relates the percent who believe this is important to create a meaningful life objective equal to, well, where did it start? It started at 85% and each year, which we'll call T for time, we lost 0.9%. So we can find the overall percentage to just be equal to 85 the start minus the amount it went down each year. Now our goal is we know some more information. We want to know when is the percent 25. So we want to know when is the left side equal to 25. What t value would we have to have? Once we've written this equation and identified what we need to solve for, we'll be done with the problem when we can solve for t. Now I want to get t by itself, so I'm going to move what's being added to t, the 85. It's currently positive, so I'll subtract. Now 25 minus 85 is negative 60. And here we have to be cautious. The 0.9t was negative, so when we subtract 85, it still stays negative, so we should write this as 0 point, or negative 0.9t. To get t by itself, it's being multiplied by negative 0 0.9, so we're going to divide both sides by negative 0 0.9. And we would get t equals 
66.666 years. Now in this case, this problem, I should have written um, round to next year. Because whenever we talk about years, we don't like to talk about years as in 0.66 years, right? We either say 66 or 67. So if we're asked to round to next year, then our final answer would be 67 years. So after 67 years, we would expect 25% if the trend continues of students to consider developing a meaningful philosophy important. Okay. Now for the next example, I recommend you read through it twice. So pause the video, read through it twice, and try to describe in words to yourself what are they asking us to solve and compare. If you can describe it in words to yourself, then you can probably write an equation related to it. So pause the video and read this through two or three times. Think about what they're asking us to look for and then unpause when you're ready to hear the discussion. Now in this case, we have that a toll bridge costs $5 and we can realize that's per crossing. Commuters who use this bridge frequently have an option to purchase a mo monthly discount pass for $40. So they pay for the pass, and in addition to the $40, every time they pass to the toll, it's $3 instead of 5 For how many bridge crossings per month will the total monthly costs be the same, same makes us think of equal, as the cost without the discount plan? Well, let's write out the two options. We could have without discount and with discount. Without discount, it's just, let's say each pass is P. It's just five times the number of times you pass the toll. But with the discount, you pay the $40 up front, and then each time you pass the toll, you only pay $3. Now our goal is we want these to be the same. So we want these two equations to be equal to each other, which would lead us to setting them equal. And then we want to find what p-value makes this true. So we're solving the equations just like before. We're going to move the p's to one side. In this case, since I'm adding a 3p, I think it'd be easiest to subtract a 3p from both sides instead of to subtracting a 5p. That gives us 2p equals 40. To solve for p, we will, since it's being multiplied by 2, we'll divide by 2. And we get p has to equal 20 passes before the discount rate equals the normal rate. So if you were trying to consider should I buy the discount pass or not, you would have to know that you'd need to make over 20 commutes per month before it starts to save you money. Anytime before the 20 and just paying the $5 per toll would be cheaper. Next, we're going to talk about percentages. Now, one thing to remember, a good idea to keep in mind is if you're trying to find the percent of a number, then what you do is you take the percent written as a decimal and then multiply it by the number in question. That's our general idea of how do you find the percentage of a value. So for our example, we have after a 30% price reduction, reduction makes us think it went lower, you purchase a new computer for $840. What was the computer's price before the reduction? Okay. Well, we can think about this. It's 30%. Now, if it's a 30% reduction, then we need to remember that means that we kept 70% of original because you took away 30%, but you're still left with 70% of the original price. We know the sale price is 840, so we know the result of this calculation. So 70% as a decimal, you would move the decimal place over twice, 0 0.70 times the unknown original price, that results in $840 because that 70% of the original is 840, the sale price. Now we want to find the original price. Currently, the original price is being multiplied by 0.7, so we could divide both sides by 0.7. Now 
and that would give us $1,200. So the original price was $1,200, and we can verify this. If we want to consider a 30% discount, we would say, what is 70% of the original price? Because a 30% discount is 70% of the original times 1,200, and indeed we would get 840 as expected. Now finally, how could we rearrange an expression given in multiple variables to just isolate one of them? In this case, we have P equals 2L plus 2W, and we want to get W by itself. So the way you would go about this is just the same as whenever you would solve with actual numbers, except whenever you do the operations, they don't simplify, you just have to keep writing the expression. Now, what's keeping the W from being by itself? Well, the 2L that we're adding to it and the 2 that we're multiplying. But we know that you always get rid of the things that you're adding first. So since we're adding a 2L, I would subtract a 2L from both sides, which cancels out here, and we're just left with 2W. But on the left side, P minus 2L can't simplify any further. So what we have to do here is we just have to write P minus 2L. They don't simplify together because they're different expressions. This is the best we can do. Now we want to get w by itself, but it's currently being multiplied by 2. So if we divide both sides by 2, then we would get w is equal to p minus 2l, all divided by 2. And in this case, we've maneuvered the equation to where it's still equivalent in value to the beginning, but w is now isolated. For our next one, we want to solve the equation t equals d plus pm for m. I recommend that you pause the video and attempt this on your own. Unpause to check your work. Now to get m by itself, eventually we'll have to move the p that's multiplying and then the d that's adding. But we know that we move addition first, it's currently positive, so I'm going to subtract from both sides. Now t minus d, the best we can do is just write t minus d. That's equal to p times m. To get m by itself, we would divide both sides by p. And we have m equals t minus d, all divided by p. Now from this section, we do have these homework problems. They're all odd, so you can check your answer in the back of the book after you finish your problem. If you get the question right, move on to the next one. And if you got the question wrong and you're unsure as to why, feel free to send me a picture of your work and I'd be happy to offer comments. And remember, you're also welcome in any of my virtual office hours each week.